Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is uh, Tuesday. I'm a little discombobulated because we do have the short week uh, this week. Oh, yeah. Um, all of our guests today brought to you by the Waddling Dog Pub, one of Victoria's favorite local watering holes. Craig Button standing by. Located 10 minutes from the ferry terminal, the Waddling Dog Pub is a place to be to catch all NFL, NHL, playoff action, any league. With spring finally here, the Waddling Dog is excited to open their heated dog-friendly patio. I know you're a fan, Rick. Don't miss their oh. fully stocked liquor store and 30-room boutique hotel attached. There are countless reasons to come sit and stay at the dog. The waddling dog. Uh, Delaney's okay tiring Langley inbox. Apparently, bar shirt is a thing. There's a lot of people with a lot of submissions saying, I never heard the expression. Bar shirt. I've never heard bar shirt. Dress shirt, I've heard. I've been to a few. I've never heard bar shirt. Yeah. Maybe you don't remember. Maybe that's that's the problem. Uh, TSN scouting director joining us now, uh, Craig Button, as the second round of the NHL playoffs. i start today with a couple of games. How are you, sir? I am good. Just uh, you talk about bar shirts. So I, I want to ask you this question. You know, sometimes I go to social media mm -hmm. just to get all the positive reinforcement, all the positive comments that come your way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we know. We know. <laughs> but, 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 but I was reading something from, uh, from a viewer last week, and they said, Craig, why don't you wear a suit and tie on Donnie and Dolly's show? Oh, like I saw that. Do, yeah. Like you do on Jay Onright's show. So, you know what? Like, I guess sometimes maybe I come a little more casual than I should. But do, do you think I should be wearing a suit and tie no, on your No, no, no. Oh, okay, just want to make sure. It doesn't matter yeah, what you wear, look, Craig. You always look good. No, <laughs> I just want to make sure. I just it's make it's sure. 11 in the morning. It's not suit time. <laughs> you know it. We know it. We like casual Craig. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Craig, a million ways to go here. So much uh, happening. Round two of the playoffs uh, starting. But let me, let me start here because it's happening as we speak. Pens, Leafs, both with their locker room, uh, dressing room, clearouts today, cleanouts today. Which of those two franchises, on the ice at least, do you feel is in better shape? Well, it's hard not to say Toronto Maple Leafs just because they're their group of young players that not only are high level, but they're younger, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to, you know, you're looking at Sidney Crosby, who, who is going to turn 35 this August. You got Malkin and Latang, who are in that, who are right there, you know, expiring contracts. And I, I think the Penguins have a really good team. I think Sidney Crosby is still a superior player in the league. And, you know, Latang, I think, is one of the best defensemen in the league. You know, Malkin still average a point a game uh, after coming back from knee surgery. I think they have a great supporting cast. But with an older group, you know, you're trying to understand, okay, you know, how much more do, do they have in it? It doesn't mean that the players aren't playing well, but you got to ask yourselves those questions. For Toronto, the questions are very different. Despite having a really, really, you know, strong young group and a really high-performing young group, I mean, we're looking at six straight playoffs, and they still have not had a playoff round win. So, but I, I think that you have to feel, and I, I think looking, looking at it objectively, I, I would say that the Toronto Maple Leafs, is the place you'd rather be just because they're, they're younger players, they're stars, and they're really, uh, uh, you know, despite the fact they haven't won in the playoffs yet, doesn't mean they won't. Uh, you're in Calgary. Uh, is there any chance the Battle of Alberta lets us down when it comes to entertainment value? I say no chance whatsoever, Donnie. You know, one of the things, and I'll share this story with you, back in the fall, into the winter of 2002 is when Daryl Sutter joined our team in Calgary. I was the general manager. One of the first things, I mean, not one of the first things, but one of the, one of the priorities for Daryl, and he said this very clearly to the group, beating Edmonton matters. Hmm. Winning the Battle of Alberta during the regular season matters. Daryl gets it. And right away, he talked about it. I remember coming out of a game uh, years ago, in, in my first year as the manager, we played in Edmonton, and, and let me tell you, we got it handed to us by the Edmonton Oilers. The next morning, I was in a president's breakfast, and you know, and and you know, and and they, they invited 
they invited season ticket holders. And we probably had about 50 season ticket holders in there. Tommy Abilene was sitting to my left. I, I'd come down, at, it was at 7 o'clock or 7.30. Anyway, I remember sitting there. Tommy hadn't played the night before, and we were just commiserating about the game. Then, the, the, you know, this exchange, you know, uh, hey, what do you think? What do you like and everything? And about an hour and 15 minutes ago, I remember it was about quarter to nine because they, they like to wrap this up about nine, nine, 15. I put up my hand. <laughs> and I, and of course, you know, it's becoming obvious. I have my hand up, right? Well, so they turn to me and I go, is anybody in this room as pissed off about us getting our butts kicked last night in Edmonton as I am? 90 minutes, 90 minutes of unbridled wow. passion from the fans. And that's what is here. Daryl gets it. The Edmonton Oilers get it. Alberta gets it. It's been 31 long years since we've had it in the playoffs. And now you have, you, you have two teams with spectacular players. Obviously, McDavid leads the way there. I, I don't think there's any way it's going to let us down, Don. Uh, Craig, I want to get your thoughts on uh, Jim Rutherford said yesterday he needs more sandpaper. Uh, there's a lot of heavy teams in the West. What's your definition? We're not talking about a fighter on the fourth line who just comes out and fights. Are we talking about skill and will? Are we talking about uh, more size and grit in the top nine when he says uh, says that, uh, Craig? Yeah, you know, it's always, I mean, we, we, we hear these words, oh, we need grit, we need weight, we need to be heavier, we need sandpaper. You know, what I always say about, the, you need to be well-balanced. You, you know, you, 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 don't, you build a house, you need a kitchen. You need a living room. You need bedrooms. You need washrooms. You need showers, right? Like, I mean, yeah. like, are you going to build? Are you are you going to design your kitchen the same way you design your bathroom? I don't think so. No. And and it's the same thing with teams. So, but I would like, you know, like, you, you want to be well balanced. Uh, I say I use football as an example all the time. You know what? You need big, burly, heavy linemen to protect the quarterback. You need yeah. fast, wide receivers to catch the ball. You need a quarterback that has accuracy. So. I think it's just code for we need a little bit more uh, to balance out our team. I go back to the Detroit Red Wings of the early 90s. Go back and look at some of the players they had. They had top-notch talent in their group. Ray Shepard, Paul Eiserbart, hmm. you know, to name but a few. Really good players. But then they, then they said, we need a little bit different balance. They added Chris Draper. They added Kirk Maltby. They, they drafted Murdy LaPointe in the top 10 of the draft. I think that that's what Jim's talking about, is trying to find a little bit more balance. Who doesn't want more skill as opposed to less? But you need balance. You can't just have an offensive line protecting your quarterback of wide receiver size players. You're going to get yeah. killed. And it's the same thing in the playoffs. I think Jim's just looking at it as balance. Craig, yesterday I brought up on this show that five teams with 100 points were out in round one of the playoffs, and the, the two guys in this room laughed at me. And I said the parody is oh, incredible. Gosh. And I said, you know, and then I saw your tweet saying the same thing. And <laughs> just imagine Minnesota and Toronto, 113, 115 points are out in round one. It is parody, Craig. It is tough to get out of round one. Rick, it is tough. And that's the first statement. You know, really what surprises me is the other two people in the room questioning you. Oh, they ripped me. I got ripped for it. Yeah, I got ripped for it. Do you know what, Rick? There's going to be four 100-point teams out in the next round of the playoffs. Oh, I, yes. I, 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 I think that there is <laughs> there is massive parity in the league. Think about it, yeah. okay? 100 points to make it in the East. Now, yeah. that also speaks to having some bad teams. There's only one way you can have eight 100 points mm. or more uh teams you got to have some bad teams in your conference and certainly yeah. the east had that but y you know the level of play you know speaks volumes because of the 100 points and you know like I, I look at this next round of games and i go i can't really say there's a real serious underdog here there, there, there's a team that you go wow they're they're, they're really up against it and, and we saw that in the first round we saw that you know with, with, with the national predators and, and even the Dallas stars, it would have been a massive upset of the Calgary flames if they win that series. I don't see the same thing here in the second round. And so I agree with you, Rick. And you know what, like social media, sometimes you just got to take the, take the hard hits. And it doesn't mean they're always right. You just got to kind of shrug a shoulder. I, and you can't win on social media, Craig. We get called idiots all the time, 24-7. We've, we've just accepted that part of social media now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, very quickly, Craig, game one tonight. Does St. Louis have a chance against Colorado? 
yes, they have a chance because, you know, you look at their forwards one to nine. That's a, I think it's the best one to nine in the National Hockey League. And, you know, so, so they're going to have to be able to, number one, play in the offensive zone and not give away the puck because that Colorado Avalanche team is as good a transition team as you're going to see in the National Hockey League. And as you're, as you're playing, don't be giving them freebies. It, it, and, and that's going to be maybe more cycle play, holding the puck more, being more selective on your shots. But if you start feeding uh, that uh, Colorado Avalanche transition game, you're going to get bitten because they know how to bite and they bite hard in Colorado. The only way this segment could have been better is if you're wearing a suit and tie. But th- <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks. thanks so much for this, Craig. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, you guys. Have a yeah. great day. N- next time.